and welcome to the first talk at Chaos West. It will be with me, Kalisi, and also Pallium. The name is Let's Review Code Together, Einfach Mal Machen. The talk will be in German, however, it's translated by the amazing C3 Lingo team. It's track one. Hello and welcome to our talk, Let's Review Code. This talk uh, originated from a Sunday afternoon talk at a time when we actually wanted to do code reviews. Uh, we were waiting for other people in the code review group. We were wondering why are we doing code reviews in our spare time? And why aren't there more people doing this? Wir, um, das sind ich, Kalisi. We, that's uh, Kalisi. I am studying computer science at an applied university. You can also find me in the C3 News Show. Security team. Or some security topics. The second part of the speaker team is Pallium. Genau. The second speaker is Padium. I'm 37 years old, working as a software architect. I have to do a lot with code reviews, of course. And if I'm doing this in my spare time, if I find the time, I'm also doing code reviews, partly in the OpenPSD environment, links infinite and other stuff. The question that we were wondering about is what is a code review? Why are people doing that? And why is it very important to ask questions? Code review in the dictionary is a critical examination of code or a product. Code is art, we all know that. But most people probably know this from the professional environment, mostly as a tool for quality assurance in companies or as part of the software development life cycle. So basically, this means the code you've just written is being passed on to a senior developer who is reviewing the code, checks if all the conventions have been adhered to, if there are any mistakes in this code, and so on. So the question is, we're doing this in a professional environment, but how about doing this in your spare time? And this leads us to our mission. We are looking for unicorns. They are quite rare, but hopefully we'll find a few more people who we can motivate to also do code reviews in their spare time. Our mission is to motivate people to take some time and look at open source projects, look at the code in detail. Einfach leichter lesbare Kommentare zu schreiben, and das kann auch ein Teil maybe sein. even write more readable also comments, which can also be part of the code reviews. So basically, just to look at how the tools work that we take for granted and get a better technical understanding about how they are all put together. Wir haben uns sehr viel damit auseinandergesetzt, was man machen kann, damit mehr Da quite a bit with the question of how we can motivate people to do this. And we asked ourselves, what exactly is our motivation to do code reviews? So I just kind of stumbled into this. Um, I'm going to talk about more about this later. Haldium has been doing this for longer than I have, so he thought about what the motivation is. 
So, motivation is very important. Topic. So, when we approach you to ask you to do something, the question is, why would you do that? We thought about this and figured that we could do this in the form of a diagram. So there are various factors um, to factors are altruism and egoism. Of course, there are a few more, but we're going to limit it to these two. A very egoistic goal is um, that a person looks at source code and tries to find security leaks and sell that as an exploit. Um, that, well, it is one way to approach it, but um, I just want to disappoint people who do it this way. We can do it, but it's not exactly profitable if you do it only for monetary reasons. I would not advise this. So would be better to use things like static code analysis. So, how do you, as the reviewer yourself, profit from doing code reviews? So, one important factor is that you can increase your own competencies. So, when I was still at school, I was interested in programming already. I was able to put together little programs. But at some stage, you're wondering, am I good enough to do this in a professional environment already? So can I write programs who do what they're supposed to do, in my opinion, but, or is this really high quality code? Or same in university, I mean, you can pass your um, uh, semester, but is this really the kind of quality that people out in the real world expect? And I started looking at applications, which I'm using myself. So, for instance, like small programs like that, how do they work? Basically, you can think about what would you do yourself, but is this really what other people have done? And you're basically building up the competences, how these programs work. Um, I mean, these are small examples, not that relevant in a professional environment, but there are others. Such as the Spring Framework. I mean, surely there are many people using Spring Framework, but how many people really understand this in detail, how it works? Uh, this you can learn by examining the source text. And just think about what the programmers have thought about. And if you do this for many projects, you can get better at understanding other people's code. And I can confirm this from my own experience. And this really happens in real life quite a lot. If you start new in a company, or you're being drawn into a different project, um, as a freelancer, this happens to you all the time. And of course, you don't want to waste time unnecessarily by understanding code, but you need a routine. So this should also be fun, of course. You can have fun by yourself, but also in a group. And we're going to talk about this further in this talk. Otherwise, we also have the situation of um, uh, to exchange of information, which is always um, important and hateful for others, so that I shouldn't only uh, pass on my information to others, but uh, the other way around as well, that others, uh, you can learn from others as well. And as a senior developer, 
you should you can always uh, also learn from junior developers because when you are actually um, very uh, aware of your own own code then you um, dump over issues or tickets because you never expect um, uh, think a lot of people do not understand this and this is always advantageous to um, change and with others and look uh, at the code and review it together with other people get a different point of view and uh, have um, input like that. And we also um, are coming to the altruistic uh, motivations. Uh, once you found uh, an issue, it's not necessary that you have to sell it. You can um, actually aid to uh, fix it. You can you can correct it. You can make a feature extension. Um, once you understood what the issue is or what needs to be added here, and then you're actually part of the open source community. Not only that you are um, reviewing it, but that you're also practicing it, not only you're using it. And once this is cleared up, uh, the question remains, what uh, is the uh, way to do this in a group? Yeah, this is also the question, how can we uh, do this format and how can we um, create uh, shape this and we have a couple of questions or issues which we have to address as Paulium uh, explained um, in larger groups it would be uh, an, a challenge so we want to create an environment in which all people can learn together every every individual can um, get be heard and thus klein müsste die gruppe auch sein um, this limits the size of the group. The next issue that we have is we need uh, to enable everybody in the group to uh, come along to be able to follow. Um, and we looked at a couple of things and, and we considered whether it makes sense uh, to make overflow videos uh, and uh, explain how we found this um, this false these issues um our our the issue was that it always appears that it, though this is very simple and easy this very long process that you have sometimes over several hours um, it's not really um, being displayed uh, by doing this. So uh, doing this video format, um, we, we decided against that, even though it's, it, might be it might be a very uh, sensible way for some people. It might also be that when you see a vulnerability, you uh, then create a video like that, because explaining something might help yourself to understand the issue more, more clearly. The other possibility would be uh, larger meetings in groups. So we don't want to reinvent the wheels. Open source scene and community are, there's obviously, or there's surely some people um, who already do it this way. And we were right, we found some people. There were, uh, there was the, there used to be the Open BSD Daily, uh, which used to be one hour a day in an IRC channel where he wrote what he is thinking about doing a code review that he is currently doing. And previously, uh, in before this talk, we wrote to him and said, Hey, we're trying to make a talk about this, about the code review group. What do you think uh, would be a, a sensible format? in order to reach uh, a large audience, how can you scale this? And his answer was maybe make a Twitch stream where three people together in one stream are doing a code review, um, one after the other, and uh, they explain what is happening and what, what, what they're thinking about, what their considerations are. For me personally, I'm, uh, um, this would not be very good for me because I, I um, ignore things when they're, when they're very um, long, and so this follow along a, a three hour uh, video would be tricky for me. But there's other people that are doing code review, for example, Code Reading Club, they had a similar Similar issue, they thought, okay, we do a code reading club. We can't be that many people. And they did this in a Zoom session, and then they had the, the first uh, time they had a much too a large group. So they had to limit the participants so that not everybody could partake in every uh, instance. The consequence of this, uh, what is it for us? Um, it is that at the point when we asked ourselves which formats we can use, uh, at that point we had already sort of um, understood which format would work well for us and might, it might work for you as well. So how are we handling this? How uh, does a code review look for us? Code review 
or BH3 way. B3 H2 is our capture the flag group in Hamburg. And in the meantime, we are sitting on for three months already doing code reviews. And it all things started uh, when Paldium wrote, hey, I'm doing a lot of code reviews in my spare time, and I would like to do this together with other people and maybe explain this to people. Yeah, is there, are there anybody is there anybody interested? And in the, initially, he did not expect the the impact that it had. And now we've been doing it for three months. And initially, we uh, had a fixed uh, date in the week. Now we have two fixed dates during the week. Most importantly, um, is important is to say that our approach and our goal that our goal is not to find vulnerabilities. That's also, of course, a goal. But our main aim is to learn how to make a code review, what approach to do, what the methodology should be, which sources we should use, what are the documentations, and where can I find them? And that's why we most often uh, switch the projects which we review. We started with less. That uh, was due to the fact that we did not know how to do how to how to act uh, once we find security um, relevant vulnerabilities, and the chance for this was very low there. So we started with that, and we also found a couple of things which was uh, highly motivating. That we actually did find something, and it didn't take hours. And uh, uh, dear Mark Rudeman. Um, accepted our change requests, and by now we are at OpenSSH. We are at OpenSSH. And a further reason why we are changing our project is because not everybody always has time. When you have two, two meetings a week, it's kind of tricky because you all have a um, real life and a job. So uh, not at every uh, date and time everybody can be present. So we change around the project so that people who are coming um, new or spontaneous don't have so such a high uh, learning curve um, you know this maybe as well and um, when you're working into new code base it takes a long time and it also is difficult when you uh, join a group newly to, to um, uh, be able to orient yourself how are we doing it we meet thursdays evenings and sundays uh, afternoon and pallium usually brings a project uh, with him before now it's a state before it was left and then we look at this and we do this in the way one person is sharing a screen and we go line by line through the code, we step through it, and the person that is stepping through it is explaining what is happening, and we jump to functions and so on and so forth. And what is important for us is that everybody gets to take part and gets to take a turn and that we also um, leave room for everybody to talk and, and everybody has a chance to ask questions. I'm still studying, uh, so I don't have the uh, immense uh, programming experience with C. We have ex people among the group that are very, very experienced and have lots of knowledge about operating system. But we're trying to, or we're creating an, an environment in which every question is, is okay. And very often, these questions are helping us to discover new things that weren't clear to the others. That for that in regards to our approach. And we hope that uh, we caught you all and uh, got you hooked and you can uh, group uh, you can found, find your own group, start your own group. But maybe you don't know how to do this. How, how should I approach this? How should I do code review? So Pallium is, uh, has collected some approaches how one can do this and what is uh, recommended. Yeah. Exactly. So one can imagine you sitting together in a group and uh, decided upon a project and are happy uh, or asking oneself what we're going to do first. The project can be uh, 10,000 or 100,000 uh, or with some kernels even more um, lines of code, which might be uh, sort of um, off-putting as, as a beginner, how you're going to approach this when you don't have a developer who can explain this. Uh, it might be even more difficult. So even in our group, we have uh, experience with different approaches to this. One would be, it might sound uh, strange, but it's actually working quite well, is you sort the file 
and you go alphabetically through the files. Or you can sort them by size, file size, and go them by si and set through them by size. It just has the advantage um, that you're going to be thrown into it somewhere along the line, and you have no understanding what is happening at that point of. Um, and this is the large uh, benefit of this approach. You don't know where you are, you only have the, the code, and you have to, from that code, um, deduct what um, or um, work upon what uh, is happening. And this has the advantage that you're not being um, biased by what you imagine or believe the, the code is doing, but you actually have to read the code and, and understand what it's doing. And by doing this, you find discrepancies quite uh, quickly. So you look at the code, you imagine what it's, you try to understand it, and when um, what you see is not what you expect the code to do, then you find the, the issue. So if you have functions that are um, not doing what they're supposed to be doing, or, or edge cases where a huge value can be can be entered to a function, or a very small value, uh, which, um, which might not work for the way it is uh, written. And this would mean uh, that from that point, um, you you would have to think, how can I reach this function, which I just found? So it means to uh, tag along and um, think, how do I have to execute the software in order or a library? And what do I have to do? Uh, what edge cases in order to come to this uh, very function? And in this way, I have the possibility to find out a different approach would be that I look at the entrance point of the program, such as the main function. And based on this, I can then think about, um, so for instance, I'm calling cat with a file and think about what is the code path. So I step through the debugger step by step thinking about what is happening, what could happen, and then I can try thinking about what would happen if I'm doing something different at a certain place, uh, whatever you can imagine, or what happens if I concatenate a pipe. So these are things if I take that approach that I will never reach any dead code. So there's no point in jumping into any method which I can't reach. And that way you would not see methods that aren't being used at all. Another thing that might happen in both approaches is that you find something which has not been programmed correctly. So you find a bug. And you can think about, is this the only uh, part which has been used in this way? And I can start looking for the same pattern in other programs. So this approach uh, has been taken with OpenBSD project. So as soon as a bug was found, the entire code base was examined to see if this bug occurred elsewhere. This has led to some new ideas, such as R copy and so on. So you could also look at the history of a file to find out what was uh, fixed in the past, get an understanding of the bugs that happened in the past and to see if they might occur in other projects as well. The other thing that we want to um, give you in this talk, the idea is to look at the specifications. So for instance, of an audio format or an archiving program to see how is this application meant to work? What is the basic idea behind it? So that we can see if all the applications that I'm using have thought about all the different points and put them down at their specifications. For instance, they might be written in an ambiguous way and leave room for interpretation. And it might miss um, certain points and then the program 
can we compare to other programs that run into the same situation to see how the other programs are dealing with it? If you imagine that you found a, a place, a spot in the code, which you assume or you assume to have a, an issue, it would be good to do a proof of concept, a so-called POC. This um, means you have to look how do I have to run um, or call the program or the library in order to reproduce this error. Um, so this is good for beginners or even experienced people to really be um, ensure that what you just found um, is, a, is an issue. And with this proof of concept, you can uh, then write a bug report or um, uh, even attempt a patch and then do a pull request or an issue where you can uh, very clearly um, com uh, describe, dear developer or maintainer, when you're using the, your software with the following input, there is uh, a, a, a crash or I can, I can maybe execute uh, code or whatever. This is my this is a, so that you can then um, elaborate and say, this is my example data and this is the patch that I would recommend to, to solve it. And uh, the author or the maintainer um, can then decide to implement this fix or not. And but this is also when it's security relevant, um, uh, this is um, then possible to have negative uh, negative consequences like privilege escalation or uh, servers uh, where I can see the data of a different user. One should um, not publicize these issues, which is why um, we as a group were unsure how to um, handle security issues. Um, so one should contact the maintainer privately or over a bug bounty broker, depending on how you want to handle this. This is um, up to everybody themselves, but especially you have to be careful with this kind of publications. And these are the uh, points or uh, issues which are important to us and how to do a code review. Because in, in looking at the time of our, our talk and the um, audio uh, feed, uh, this might not uh, be sufficient for everybody. We have aggregated some links. So we have um, the code review guide, which is uh, rather focused on web services, but this doesn't have to be an issue, especially when you're working in the web environment, uh, web service environment, this might be very helpful. Um, how to look at uh, code sources uh, for my company, how am I looking at frameworks which I'm using, what are the points there, um, and then the idea for the bug hunters. This means that people who might want to have some reward or financial compensation for it, they, they could um, then look at uh, what Google is saying about this topic. Google has a very good top uh, example um, where she, where they in their environment, development environment, are doing code reviews. These are, of course, the trained reviews. So two developers are working together and are looking um, what needs to be inserted. Um, it seems more like a code audit than a code review, looking at the existing plate. And then the projects which you already mentioned, um, we have the third last the um, link to OpenBSD daily from uh, Vault. There, you know, he doesn't only have his all his results, which he found, but also his um, uh, thoughts about this written down. One can easily read this. And we have the Rust Code Reading Club. That is the reading club who is um, looking at the Rust Club, the Rust Code. Uh, looking at the Rust compiler ZC code, de depending on where they are in the project. And we have the code reading club. That would be codereading.org. There one can very uh, beautifully um, uh, turn to them when one thinks that this is an interesting topic, but I'm not sure whether there are groups, uh, how is it, how is it, uh, how's the landscape and this, they have a good contact possibility by email. And one can write them saying, hey, I'm interested in this topic, I'm, I'm in this, this area or subject, or I might need uh, support with my, um, and they help. Um, definitely, and uh, support one in a good sense. With this, 
what we have thought about how to do the code review. I'm getting back. Yeah, thank you. One small um, notation. Um, when we have some bugs, uh, we um, ask for money for pizza, which is uh, kind of a cool thing, and we can all be um, uh, agree on that. And uh, even Marta, but there's definitely no no um, struggle about who gets the reward because pizza and Marta are best shared. So our tips for you and our, our recommendation is when you think this is cool and I want to like to do this. Um, initially, I did not dare to do this because I'm, I'm not as uh, good enough. Um, make groups, get together, look for other people in your environment. Uh, maybe there are other people that you um, feel comfortable with that you want to start a project like this. This might be in your hackerspace, in your university. Maybe you Twitter tweet about it and find people that you can do this. Then very important in order to pull it, uh, to follow through, find a, um, a recurrent uh, date and uh, time. Because if you have full uh, schedules or things happen unexpectedly, it is more easily uh, consistent when you have a fixed slot for this time slot. Then not so trivial, uh, agree on a programming language. It can be a programming language that you know very well. It is definitely um, sensible to have someone that is very versed in this programming language because otherwise you might not be able to see certain things. And when questions arise, you might, uh, you, you often need someone to talk about this. That is a crucial point. When I'm talking, when I'm uh, doing, making a group, code review group at my university, for example, we're doing all of our education with Java, then I would probably uh, found a group that is reviewing Java. Because the um, chance of uh, finding people that can uh, are proliferate in Java is quite large. And when people want to uh, join that are not so versed in programming or uh, coding, then could aid them and support them. So always crucial to uh, look at other people, um, uh, let them let them read the code, let them ask questions. Um, if they don't know something, this is this is non a non issue. Uh, it's just cr um, important that they learn it. Then look for a cool project. You can do this uh, with different motivations. Um, you can. And maybe say that you're using certain uh, software like Git. So I'm looking at the code of Git because I know how this the tool works. So I'm uh, trying to understand how the code works. Or you can say, well, we want to be motivated. I'm going to look for a tool that has some issues or where I can find certain things uh, in order to be uh, stay up with it. This is something that one can do with a project selection. So like Pallium said before, or also when you deal with security related things, maybe initially you want to think that it's not critical. Um, and make sure you have a community so you can ask someone. Be patient, that's also important. So, I don't mean patient initially to set everything up, but once you have started, for instance, um, we do Thursdays, two hours, you need to have patience with yourself. So you will find something in the first two hours. In our case, for instance, Palio might have already found something. And says, well, oh, there's something fishy here. And then we start from the beginning and sometimes we get some initial support, which makes things faster. But when we look at something ourselves, we need sometimes two or three uh, sessions until we have found some play. New questions might come up and so on. So, so reviews and finding bugs is not something where you find something and finish it uh, one hour of a video call, but it takes effort, you need to create a proof of concept, and then you find something else, or you might have um, been doing a bug somewhere. So, make the effort to 
ist nicht zu so viel Aufwand ist, Think about man it. das lösen kann. How Weil this gerade in Open Source Projekten sind es nicht so viele Menschen, auf deren Rücken das getragen wird. Open Source Projects aren't that many people who carry the weight and they will gladly accept the fix if you can provide one. Fragt im Zweifelsfall nach, wenn in ihrem Rücken niemanden habt, wenn ihr jemanden should ask, kennt, so maybe someone in your group knows someone who knows someone if you are unsure. And Dinge there's no so problem. Zu I mean, it's no issue if you have to ask questions. Da, gerne, in my opinion, um, there's always someone das somewhere oder die Frage who can Aber um, so question or explain a problem, but make sure you und zu have the question clearly stated. And finally, be excellent to each other. Everyone und, should be confident. Um, das heißt, es wird irgendwie And that means no one's being made fun of. And you shouldn't say, how come you don't know this or something similar, because this might lead to people just dropping off, not coming back, and they won't learn anything. It's important that we all do this. And if you really want to do this, then you should have the opportunity to do these peer reviews. And in my opinion, my experience, Dinge zu verstehen, zu verstehen, wie this really helps a lot um, in my understanding of how software works, uh, instead of just creating code that helps you think about other people's code. So, um, this only leaves me to say that we love cats. So, be a cool cat. And do code reviews. Go to a code reading club or create one yourself. Look at open source software, think about it. And if you have any questions, or to start of a group or to organize it when you're stuck, here are my Twitter handle and the one of the C3H2 group, CTF group in Hamburg. You can also find me on GitHub. And what I just remembered, which we haven't said for, how, how do you connect? So for us, um, the best thing is group calls in Signal. You can also share your screen in Signal now, which is really helpful. Other than that, we use um, with people, external people, we use Jitsi. Um, Palgen, you want to say something about our technical setup? Yes. So, with video conferences, um, everyone. I've seen this doesn't always work that well, especially about upload. So this um, could be initial way to upload. But with this, not that much. So you can connect to the server, create a session there, and share the terminal with everyone. So, for instance, you could do it such a way that only one person can operate the terminal, everyone else has read write, then you just need to coordinate who's writing what. Um, yeah, and it was fun as well. So much for that. So, we're done with the talk, and hopefully you've already cloned your first wrapper. And I'll just open it in your console. And now we're looking forward to questions in our Q&A session.
Um, das haben wir bisher nicht. Vielleicht sollten wir mal mit Bianca Kaste sprechen. Wir uh, we did not do this um, so far. Maybe we have to talk to Bianca Katze how this works with the communication with the government. It is our private project uh, in a way. We are very um, taken aback by all the reaction. So maybe we can find a small code uh, review uh, movement together. A little note from the translators here. Unfortunately, we can't hear the questions from the Herald. Yeah, gerne. Alim, do you want to? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, the test cases uh, should be ideally um, during a pull request be um, commented in order to clarify that it's an issue. I've, uh, it happened to me quite a lot that um, people replied, "Ah, oh, thank you for the for the um, corrections, but can you have it? Can you supply a test case?" So if you, it's, if one should um, provide this if possible, and then hope for the maintainer to support one because there's many um, frameworks where it's difficult. Well, that's a good question. I think it's the same that, as when one is doing scientific papers and has to learn how to do that. It's always helpful to read a lot of code from others in order to get a feeling for how to solve problems. But one does not, um, cannot avoid to find your own projects and program itself because you only get better in programming when actually doing programming. Um, so that's the way I handle this. Maybe uh, Pallium has a, a diverging opinion. Well, the reviews all help a lot um, in order to uh, get a sort of um, fine fine grain uh, finalization. So if I look at the project's history to understand why they chose certain um, changes and when did the changes happen. So I would suggest that once the basics are um, understood the, with the code review, one can one can improve. Just doing review in order to learn, I would recommend. Um, we have got a problem with our Herald. We're having some issues with our Herald as uh, earlier. That's why after a quick uh, inter interruption, we're going to continue. I'd like to um, connect to that earlier question, the question whether there is a collection of um, often um, seen uh, issues. Paulim, is there a, a collection of uh, common issues? I would um, all mention the CVE IDs or the open source security bug tracker. Uh, otherwise, um, the things which I would point to is over. That means uh, the top 10 of the issues um, that shows quite well what issues are there. It's almost a small, uh, a quick search uh, for the programming languages and common bugs should suffice and uh, result in a lot of lists like this. When it's talking about C and the manual pages uh, on, on Newsday may be uh, interesting. They might have notes or other um, input what is going wrong with a certain function. Thank you. Do we have Herald Audio? Die haben wir bisher tatsächlich ignoriert. With those we have, those have we have ignored uh, so far. Maybe we should add them. But yeah, but we uh, try to focus on the source code which we are using, and uh, so the test test files are not included. We have immer noch audio probleme mit uns. We still have uh, audio issues with our Herald. One moment, please. Um, die Frage war, wenn der the question was, when the same uh, issue, uh, the same error is done again in another project, 
Uh, so, for example, if I'm using the wrong function, but how can I do it when I found uh, an issue which uh, violates programming principle, which I cannot uh, find across all the files with Control F, Command F? I'm, I'm thinking whether we have one issue like that. Do we have one like that, Paul John? I have seen a project in Google Open Source, uh, which uh, is being used. Uh, I forgot the name, but what I can recommend is. Um, it's almost the control F uh, um, code search.debian.net is a um, website from the Debian project where you can search across all source codes and use regex in order to um, look for things. And I would recommend using that examples um, uh, until our Herald has audio again would be um, in C, F, get, so uh, line by line, read in. As soon as you have that uh, line, you can look at the next uh, line after that, and then you're probably going to find something. So it's still a lot of uh, a bit of work. Um, Google has a lot uh, much better tools uh, similar to regular expressions which you can use. Um, but um, maybe I can I can uh, link that or tweet that. Yeah, I can I can tweet that um, on my Twitter account. You can find that there. Is our Herald now back with audio? We try it again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you working? I'm not sure I understand the question. I try to answer the way I understood it. What we in our group do is not writing open source software. So we merely uh, look at open source software and review it. And of course, when we find something, we write a fix for it and a proof of concept. And we uh, create a pull request corresponding. Of course, before we uh, do the pull request, we look at it in the group. But I would not uh, would call wouldn't call that review. Review we're doing this when the uh, maintainer is uh, uh, not allowing the pull request, and we sometimes rewrite it. Um, in der Regel gibt es halt dann das Projekt, Usually, um, when the project that we look at with the pull request, they are the most relevant point, contains the most relevant points. Otherwise, we have not done this. And if you are interested in this, we can we can consider this. Wir machen das tatsächlich im Moment. We make, we don't, we go, we do it the way that one person is sharing the screen and um, other people can um, individually work along in their own computer in the IDE of their, their choice. We're all uh, hardcore BIM users. Which might not be a, a starter and beginner friendly, but the IDE shouldn't be the um, limiting factor. And when it's Codium or whatever, and you prefer that, then you can also do that. I would like to um, add one point there. The same environment, uh, I would prefer when uh, it's possibly most mostly uh, various and different IDEs because many issues happen on 32 or 64 bit. Um, they might only run when certain libraries are in use. So the more diverse, um, then it should be, then that, that helps. Uh, it might make the communication a bit more difficult, but it uh, enables uh, a lot of. Uh, Better, much better proof of concepts or, or, or test um, production. Ich würde jetzt sagen, einfach mal machen. I would um, simply do that. Just I would say, go ahead and actually do it. I'm actually insisting. Uh, that people have to do it in the um, in the work environment. It aids a lot whoever uh, was inspired by the talk uh, in order to do the code review will realize how much um, work it is to uh, go into the different styles of the projects. And if that would all be the same, that would make it much simpler. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's true. It's always it's funny, um, especially C style conventions when it is pre Chernobyl code, uh, as Pallium all, all, uh, often says. 
uns auch ganz wichtig und manchmal ist es auch dann, gerade das ist also important for us and, and it's very very confusing for us to to get into the mindset and then to also write the fixes in the in the correct style hören wir herrschen wieder nicht we don't hear him again Okay, um, die Frage eben, okay, the question was, how important for us is the Star Convention and what do we say about clean code? What was the question that Pallium and I answered? I'm looking that I can get the next question. Unless the Herald is audible again. Sits. Ich hoffe, man kann mich wieder hören. Setzt die Tools zur Code-Analyse ein. We're using tools for code analysis. Das machen wir ganz bewusst nicht, weil wir... Yeah, we don't do that very consciously, because even when it takes longer, our focus is to understand what is happening. And thus, we, uh, except for Pallium, when our, as our uh, dictionary for C, we don't, we don't use tools for analysis. Geht es beim Review darum, Bugs oder potenzielle Bugs? Is the point of reviewing to find Bugs or potential weaknesses, or also to optimize something or shorten the code? And have you examples for this? In principle, our goal is to find mistakes and bugs, but when one finds something that could be more efficient, we uh, fix that often as well. I'm not actually, uh, no example comes to mind. I need to look into my pull request history, unless you have some uh, example, Pallium. I actually don't. If um, it's regarding fixing bugs or performance optimization. In both cases, it would be important to point out and prove that the issue is actually impacting the performance. I try to uh, abstain from performance optimizations almost consciously because it usually uh, um, ends in discussions and it's um, the question how well can I uh, resolve this with the maintainer? Is there a objective basis to work on this? For example, if I'm saying my LLS is too slow because a couple of milliseconds too clo slow, it's going to be um, probably disregarded. Uh, the public trust in the browser would be an, an issue, a different issue, but a bug uh, is um, much more much more easy to accept without discussion. I also examining things like design patterns or similar during the code reviews. We, as I would say, don't do it unless we stumble upon it and we're uh, keen on it. So it's always dependent on our mood. We all, we, because we do this for the fun. And if we have fun uh, to pick it apart, then we would do it. Palium, hast du dazu noch eine Ergänzung? Otherwise, I'm not sure. Palium, do you have something to add? Architecture reviews, um, I would recommend. At least when you have the time for it, if you have the time for it. But the point is, uh, the question is, what, what, what are you going to get from that? Uh, in order to question an architecture, I would, I would um, at the most um, uh, add an issue for that issue, because we do a pull request that changes all the architecture, the chances of this being uh, ignored or, or disregarded is very high. So we often focus on what is there, what is found, what we see, and um, don't um, do that evaluation very public. And, and, uh, but by doing the review, you are um, you are coming into contact with the, with the architecture, and you understand whether it's good or bad. And this is something that you, for yourself, can learn. Do you directly approach the maintainers before reviewing a specific project, or are you doing this through the pull requests after review? So far, we have not um, done this. When we found something which we found critical, uh, we, we contacted the maintainers directly before we uh, made public comments about this. Do you know 
groups who would like to um, review projects in the area of public money, public code. We only know ourselves and the mentioned, aforementioned links. I think I cannot say more regarding this right now. Anything else we need to uh, talk in the group and come back. Thanks a lot. Unfortunately, we haven't managed to go through all of the questions, but I have never had such a long Q&A before. And the speakers have other projects here at C3. Stellt mir sonst gerne die Fragen bei Twitter ähm, und Paldium und ich versuchen, die so gut wie möglich zu beantworten. Ich denke, das ist der. Um, uh, otherwise, ask questions on Twitter and Paldium and I try to answer it um, as well as we can. Wir haben oft gefragt, wann die nächste News Show ist. And I'm also often hearing when the News Show is going to happen. The next News Show is going to happen at 14.30. In case you want to, uh, if you're missing my face and want to see me again, that would be an option.